It's 1967, and Detroit Diesel's engineers are staring at blueprints for what would become the most powerful diesel engine ever built for commercial use. They knew it would generate catastrophic heat. They knew the maintenance would be a nightmare. They knew it would be too loud, too dirty, and too complex for most applications. But they built it anyway. This is the story of the Detroit Diesel 20 V149, an engine so powerful it could literally tear itself apart, and why Detroit Diesel kept selling it to customers despite knowing it was a technological dead end from day one. To understand why Detroit Diesel created this mechanical beast, we need to go back to the mid-1960s when American industry was experiencing unprecedented growth. Military contracts were pouring in for Vietnam, construction projects were massive, and marine applications demanded more power than ever before. Detroit Diesel's existing engines, the 6V71, 8V71, and even the mighty 12V71, were reaching their limits. The solution seemed simple. Take everything they knew about their successful V-series engines and scale it up to unprecedented proportions. The result was the 20V149, a 20-cylinder, two-stroke diesel engine that would produce over 2,000 horsepower in its most aggressive configurations. It wasn't just a larger version of its predecessors, it was a mechanical giant that pushed the limits of two-stroke design well past the point of practicality. Built around a one-of-a-kind triple-block layout, the engine stretched nearly 9 feet from end to end and tipped the scales at over 9,000 pounds dry. Each of its 20 cylinders displaced a staggering 149 cubic inches, bringing total displacement to 2,980 cubic inches, or 48.8 liters. To make that work, Detroit's engineers had to stitch together two six-cylinder banks around a central eight-cylinder block, all set at the company's traditional 60-degree V-angle. The square bore and stroke dimensions, 5.75 by 5.75 inches, helped balance combustion pressures, but they also meant the engine was constantly fighting enormous internal forces. With a 16 to 1 compression ratio in its turbocharged configuration, the 20V149 was already operating at the very limits of its design. But from the very beginning, their engineers knew they were pushing into dangerous territory. Internal memos from the development period reveal concerns about heat management, structural integrity, and long-term reliability. One engineer wrote, We're not building an engine. We're building a controlled explosion that happens to move machinery. Here's where the story gets dark. Detroit Diesel's own testing revealed that the 20V149 generated so much heat that it could literally cook itself to death under sustained high-load operation. The engine produced over 2 million BTUs of waste heat per hour, enough to heat a small office building. The cooling system required massive radiators, multiple water pumps, and constant monitoring to prevent catastrophic overheating. Even with all these precautions, the engine's operating temperatures pushed materials to their absolute limits. Cylinder heads would warp, gaskets would fail, and pistons would seize if operators weren't extremely careful about load management. Internal documents show that engineers recommended limiting continuous operation to 80% of rated power to prevent thermal damage. But this critical information wasn't always passed along to customers who expected to run their expensive engines at full capacity. The heat problem was compounded by the engine's turbocharging system. The 20V149 used up to six turbochargers, two per block, to force enough air into the cylinders to support combustion. These turbochargers operated at extreme temperatures, often glowing red-hot during operation. Turbocharger failures were common, and replacement costs were astronomical. Detroit Diesel knew the 20V149 would be a maintenance nightmare, but they underestimated just how bad it would get. The engine's complexity meant that routine service required specialized tools, extensive training, and enormous amounts of time. A simple oil change required draining over 200 quarts of lubricant from multiple sumps throughout the engine, 
the oil filters, there were 12 of them, had to be changed in a specific sequence to prevent air pockets from forming in the lubrication system. The entire process took a trained technician an entire day to complete properly. Valve adjustments, normally a routine maintenance task, became an ordeal on this engine. With 80 valves spread across three separate cylinder heads, the adjustment process required removing multiple components and could take up to a week to complete. Many operators simply skipped this critical maintenance, leading to premature engine failures. The turbocharger maintenance schedule was particularly brutal. Each of the six turbochargers required inspection every 500 hours of operation, with complete rebuilds recommended every 2,000 hours. At $15,000 per turbocharger rebuild in 1970s dollars, the maintenance cost quickly exceeded the engine's purchase price. The 20V149's triple block design created a web of interconnected systems that made troubleshooting nearly impossible. When something went wrong, and something always went wrong, technicians had to trace problems through three separate engine blocks, multiple fuel systems, six turbochargers, and a maze of cooling and lubrication circuits. The fuel system alone was a masterpiece of over-engineering. Rather than using a conventional central injection pump, the 20V149 relied on individual camshaft actuated unit injectors for each cylinder, each timed by the engine's intricate gear train. Precise adjustment of injector timing and setting required significant expertise and specialized tools, making maintenance of the fuel system both demanding and complex. The blower system added another layer of complexity. Unlike naturally aspirated engines, the 20V149 relied on three massive roots-type blowers to scavenge exhaust gases and supply initial air charge before the turbochargers built boost. These blowers were gear-driven directly from the engine's gear train, consuming a significant amount of power to keep air flowing through the cylinders at low speeds. Because the blower's timing was fixed by the gear drive, there was no routine adjustment but where in the gears, bearings, or seals could still cause serious problems. Excessive gear backlash or failing bearings could lead to poor scavenging, incomplete combustion, and heavy smoke, often requiring a full blower rebuild or replacement. Pulling a blower for service wasn't a quick job. Disassembly was extensive and could keep the engine offline for days. Detroit Diesel knew the 20V149 would be loud. <laughs> Louder than anything they'd ever built. But they may not have anticipated just how ear-splittingly violent this engine would sound in operation. It didn't just make noise, it created a mechanical symphony of destruction that could be heard for miles. The combination of 20 cylinders firing, six turbochargers screaming, and a massive supercharger howling created sound levels that exceeded 120 decibels at the operator's position. Loud enough to cause permanent hearing damage in minutes. The engine's exhaust note was particularly distinctive. Unlike smaller Detroit diesels with their characteristic two-stroke bark, the 20V149 produced a deep, rumbling roar punctuated by the sharp whistle of turbocharger surge and the mechanical whine of the supercharger. Operators described it as the sound of controlled violence. But the noise wasn't just an annoyance, it was a symptom of the engine's fundamental problems. The violent combustion events that created the distinctive sound also generated shock waves that propagated through the engine structure, causing fatigue failures in components throughout the power plant. By the early 1970s, environmental regulations were beginning to tighten, and this engine was an emissions disaster waiting to happen. The engine's crude combustion system produced massive amounts of particulates, nitrogen oxides, and unburned hydrocarbons. Detroit Diesel's own testing showed that a single engine at full power produced more emissions than an entire fleet of smaller engines, delivering the same total horsepower. 
The engine's poor fuel atomization, uneven combustion, and high operating temperatures created ideal conditions for pollutant formation. The company knew that emissions regulations would eventually make the 20V149 obsolete, but they continued selling it to customers who were unaware of the regulatory storm approaching. When the EPA began cracking down on industrial emissions in the mid-1970s, many 20V149 owners found themselves with engines that couldn't legally operate in their intended applications. The U.S. military was one of Detroit Diesel's biggest customers, using the engine to power everything from landing craft to generator sets. But military mechanics quickly discovered what Detroit Diesel already knew. This engine was a maintenance nightmare that consumed resources at an alarming rate. Military maintenance records show that 20V149 powered equipment had availability rates 30% lower than comparable units with smaller engines. The complex maintenance requirements meant that specialized technicians had to be flown to remote locations just to perform routine service. Its fuel consumption was equally problematic. A 20V149 at full power could consume between 120 and 150 gallons of diesel fuel per hour, an enormous rate for any engine and a major logistical challenge. In combat situations where fuel logistics were critical, this consumption rate made the engine a strategic liability. Despite these problems, the military continued ordering them because nothing else could deliver the same power density. Detroit Diesel knew they had a captive customer who would accept the engine's flaws out of necessity, and they exploited this relationship for years. The marine industry represented another major market for this engine, with boat builders attracted to the engine's impressive power-to-weight ratio. But Detroit Diesel knew that marine applications would expose the engine's worst characteristics. The constant high-load operation typical of marine use pushed the 20V149's cooling system beyond its limits. Saltwater corrosion attacked the massive heat exchangers, while the engine's vibration loosened fittings throughout the cooling system. Coolant leaks were common, and catastrophic overheating was a constant threat. The engine's complexity made shipboard maintenance nearly impossible. When it failed at sea, the vessel was often dead in the water until specialized technicians could be brought aboard. Many boat owners discovered too late that their impressive-looking power plant was actually a liability that could strand them far from shore. Detroit Diesel's marine sales literature emphasized the engine's power output while downplaying the maintenance requirements and reliability issues. Sales representatives were trained to focus on peak horsepower figures rather than discussing the engine's operational limitations. Construction companies were drawn to the 20V149's massive torque output for powering large earth-moving equipment and stationary machinery. But the construction environment proved to be particularly hostile to this complex engine. Dust and debris clogged the engine's multiple air filters, while the constant vibration of construction work loosened connections throughout the power plant. Its six turbochargers were particularly vulnerable to contamination, with failures occurring at rates that made equipment downtime a constant problem. The engine's size and weight created additional problems in construction applications. Moving a failed 20V149 required specialized heavy equipment and many construction sites lacked the infrastructure to support proper maintenance procedures. Construction company maintenance logs reveal that 20V149-powered equipment spent more time in the shop than in operation. One contractor reported that his excavator required major repairs every 200 hours of operation, a rate that made the equipment economically unviable. Stationary power generation seemed like an ideal application for the 20V149's massive output, but utility companies quickly discovered that the engine's complexity made it unsuitable for unmanned operation. The engine's multiple systems required constant monitoring and adjustment to prevent failures. Automated control systems of the 1970s couldn't cope with its complexity, meaning that trained operators had to be present whenever the engine was running. Utility maintenance records show that 20V149 generator sets had availability rates below 60%, unacceptable for critical power applications. 
The engine's frequent failures during a peak demand periods made it a liability rather than an asset for power companies. Detroit Diesel knew about these reliability problems but continued marketing the engine for power generation applications. Internal sales documents showed that the company was more concerned with moving inventory than ensuring customer satisfaction. By the mid-1970s, the true cost of 20V149 ownership was becoming clear. Operating costs were three to four times higher than comparable power from multiple smaller engines. Fuel consumption was excessive, maintenance costs were astronomical, and downtime was constant. A detailed cost analysis from a major construction company showed that their 20V149 powered equipment cost $47 per operating hour to maintain, compared to $12 per hour for equipment powered by smaller Detroit diesel engines. The analysis concluded that the 20V149's higher power output couldn't justify its operational costs. Detroit Diesel's own internal studies reached similar conclusions, but the company continued production because the engine's high selling price generated substantial profits, despite low sales volumes. The company was essentially selling a premium product that delivered substandard value to customers. Perhaps most damning of all, Detroit Diesel knew that the 20V149 represented a technological dead end with no future development potential. The engine's fundamental design limitations, excessive heat generation, structural complexity, and poor fuel efficiency, couldn't be solved through incremental improvements. Engineering studies conducted in the late 1970s concluded that meeting future emission standards would require a complete redesign that would essentially create an entirely new engine. Rather than invest in this development, Detroit Diesel chose to milk the existing design for as long as possible. The company's product planning documents show that they expected the 20V149 to become obsolete by 1980, but they continued selling it to unsuspecting customers who believed they were buying cutting-edge technology. The most shocking aspect of this story isn't the engine's technical problems, it's that Detroit Diesel knew about these problems from the beginning and chose to hide them from customers. Sales literature emphasized peak power output while ignoring operational limitations. Service manuals downplayed maintenance requirements while warranty terms were structured to minimize the company's liability. When customers complained about reliability problems, they blamed operator error or inadequate maintenance rather than acknowledging the engine's fundamental flaws. The company's service bulletins consistently shifted responsibility to customers while avoiding admission of design defects. Internal correspondence shows that Detroit diesel executives were aware of the engine's problems, but viewed them as acceptable trade-offs for the profits generated by high-margin sales. One executive wrote, The 20V149 may be a maintenance nightmare, but it's a profitable nightmare. The monster they created was too hot for its own good, and Detroit diesel knew it from day one.